Now that I've got the uh, building closet done and the casing all installed, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, get it all prepped up and ready for paint. Um, so you remember when I shot the brad nail out the side here, uh, got a hacksaw blade, works really well. Um, get underneath of it, bend it up. Once you got it up, cut it. Wiggle it back and forth, and it should break on your cut. Got some sandpaper, sanding block. Sanding block just keeps the paper nice and flat so that you're not actually rubbing a contour into your piece. Sand that down. Got some um, putty, wood putty. Three inch putty knife. And there you go. Uh, I like to put the patch on a little thicker than I would a drywall patch. Uh, this stuff shrinks back about the same as drywall mud does, but I will go through and sand the whole frame again. So I uh, just put a little extra on it and then knock it off with the sander. This, this putty is a real light blend, so it's very easy to sand. Um, so this same putty that's here, I would go through and do these nail holes that I've got down here. So you can see that it's, Filling that nail hole that's there. There's another one. Another one. There's some nail holes on the side here. There's the ones that are shot through the frame all the way down.
Uh, top of my frame here, I've got a damaged corner. Um, so again, I'm just gonna use that lightweight filler, um, try to make that same um, corner up with the putty. Um, once it's dry, I'll sand it lightly. Uh, I might have to do it a couple of times, but I definitely need to repair that, so. Okay, so you can see I filled the void. Uh, that's pretty good for first coat of putty. Uh, once that's dry, 24 hours, something like that, I'll sand it down again and redo that, and that should, be, that should clean it up enough to not be seen underneath the paint. Okay, so just at the last of my, just at the last of my nail holes to patch up. Um, nail holes and damage that you're fixing with uh, um, wood filler, um, always needs two coats as a minimum. Very similar to drywall screws. Uh, I like to do two to three coats over the nail holes or deficiencies. Um, and then when I do spray my paint on top of it, if I see it, if I still see it through the paint, then I can add another coat of patch to it. So minimum of two times on all the nail holes and deficiencies. Now that you've done all your uh, casing to drywall areas, um, you, I like to run another bead on this joint, as well as this joint, as well as this joint, and as well as this joint. So, um, and down on the floor, so again, with all the inside corners. So, I'm gonna proceed with the vertical one here. Okay, so I've patched uh, my nail holes two times. I've worked on filling my corners and sanding them to, to make them appear nice and perfect. Um, so now I've got to just do my final sand uh, to get the extra filler off. And on all my corners, uh, like on these header pieces and on the sill pieces on the windows and outside corners on the base, I really like to use a spray primer to um, allow me to visually see what it's going to look like when I do my final painting. Uh, when I come in here with my paint sprayer, um, you, wanna, you want it perfectly clean in here, you want all your prep done, 
and it's just nice to know that these corners are looking really good before you get to that stage. So this is a way to see how they're going to look with the spray over top. One last chance after it dries to sand it and work on the deficiencies one more time before you begin your final coats of spray. So um, I've got here a couple foam uh, sanding blocks. This one's really flexible, allows me to get into all those little detailed curves that are up at the top here. Um, and something else here is a foam block that is very similar to the one I used on drywall, but it's a softer grit, more made to sand this, uh, this filler that I've used, the wood filler on the nails. So, um, and then just some other sandpaper uh, that's recommended to be to, to use on top of paint. So it's not as aggressive as a wood sandpaper. It, it's, it's meant to um, kind of file down the paint a little bit instead of heavily sanding down with the wood sandpaper. So um, another tool that I've got is uh, an orbital sander. Um, this is a power sander. Um, I'm fortunate enough with the detail that I've chosen with the flat that I can just run this unit along this flat material just to even everything out as well as my baseboard. So when you're selecting your finished trims and baseboards and whatever you're going to use, something to keep in mind, um, you know, these flats, these flat stock material, you can use a power sander where if you, if you're using something that's got some detail, you're going to be hand sanding everything with a block so that you don't distort the profile that's on the casing. So um, with that being said, I'm going to get started. Just going to clean up this corner joint on the header with this sanding block and some paper and then show you guys a nice uh, spray primer coat. Okay, so I'm going to use these two um, um, things to sand. This is uh, my super fine sponge sanding block. I'm going to use it in here, kind of clean up that bottom edge. Um, whatnot. This, this piece of paper, uh, was I, I reduced it to a quarter size. I'm going to use that in these areas just to clean up all this stuff because this sanding block doesn't allow me to have the flexibility that the paper does. So I'm just going to begin sanding and show you guys uh, what's going on here. something much better. Okay, so I'm finished sanding that corner and also I've used my utility knife just to scrape some extra fill that was on there. Um, I'm noticing that at the bottom that there's definitely gonna be a little more patch that I've gotta add, but I still wanna start by spraying this primer just so that I can see uh, the rest of it. So um, I've got my 
spray primer. I'm just gonna give it a nice coat um, on that corner detail and against the wall. Uh, don't worry about overspray too much onto the wall. This is just my primer coat still. Um, there is a sanding between each coat of painting, so um, as long as you're not um, spraying too much overspray on the wall, you'll be okay that when you sand between your coat, um, it'll rub all that extra primer off the wall. So I'm just gonna shake up my paint and uh, get ready to show you guys how to spray the corner. Okay. Okay, so you can see a few little bubbles and stuff that are in the spray primer. Um, those will flatten out as the paint dries. If they don't, you've still got to sand this one more time anyways. So you can see that I've got the corner looking really good except for right in there. I'll probably dab a little extra fill in there before I go for my final spray. I'm fairly happy with everything else and this overspray that is on the wall allows me to really focus in on that wall joint. So I may add a little bit of um, that paintable caulking in that joint against the wall just to clean that up. But uh, you can see that the, the joint is visibly nice and I'm probably just gonna touch it up a little, couple more sprays underneath here uh, where I thought I was gonna have to prep and patch again. But it looks like if I spray it a couple times, it'll probably just go away. Okay, so that's on thick enough. It actually did get rid of the little joint that was underneath there. So I'll let this, uh, I'll let this dry and then I'll be sanding it one more time before my uh, first coat of final spray. Okay, so here's the corner of the baseboard where I have spray primed it once and then I went over top of it with my lightweight wood filler again to clean the joint up. So now what I'm gonna do is just use my sanding block to get the extra fill off and give this one more spray prime just to see how it looks. And, uh, and yeah, if it's good for spray, uh, for the final spray, then I'm done. If I've gotta sand it one more time and uh, have another look at it, then I'm, then I'm gonna go through and do that as well. So flat sanding block to avoid rounding off corners. You sand off the edges nice and flat. Okay, so this is all smooth and flat. Um, it's looking really good, so I'm just gonna spray some primer on it and um, it's likely gonna be ready to go. Okay, so 
This corner is looking really good to me. Um, got a few bubbles again from the spray that I'll have to sand out before my finish, but the actual two miter joints and how the baseboard is fitting nice and tight to the wall is exactly what I want to see. So this corner, one more sand, ready for final, final paint. So um, uh, it's a nice flawless look with the spray. Um, you could get a similar result, not as good with brushing your primer on and brushing all these baseboards and casings, but I like a nice flawless look of spraying the paint and um, so that's what I recommend that you do at your place, but if you can't access a sprayer, you're more than welcome to do it with a uh, brush and roller. Um, it's just not going to give you the exact same flawless look. So, hope that helps. Okay, so now I'm at my window. I just want to show you one final um, sand and spray prime. This is the uh, sill piece that I've put across my window and I've returned those corners the exact same in here. So just going to uh, start with my sanding again to get the extra fill off. Okay, so really good advantage of this uh, flexible sun, uh, sanding sponge. Um, you can see I've patched a nail hole right on the profile here. So I'm able to like really curve this piece to make sure that I'm not um, adjusting the profile by sanding it too deep. So just real handy to, uh, to buy these sort of tool or sort of um, things to help you with your sanding. You can pretty well get any shape um, some of them are curved already, things like that. So match your sanding uh, tools to the type of profile you got. Just make sure you can get into all those little nooks and crannies with the type of stuff that you've got. So just gonna finish with this nail hole and then I'll spray prime this corner. Okay, that's looking really good to me. The corner's all cleaned up, the top's all cleaned up, nail holes, nail holes all cleaned up. So I'm gonna spray this greater area and uh, have a look at how it turns out. Okay, so I've got this uh, finished spray. Um, I really like how this corner turned out. It's, it's looking really, really good. I'm not liking these bubbles that are showing up with the spray primer, but they'll be quite easy to sand out um, tomorrow before I spray. So, um, so yeah, the main thing I'm looking at is this inside joint here that I'm not gonna be able to get at and sand again, and in here how it looks. And as you can see, probably with the close-ups that, um, that it's looking really good, so. Okay, so now that I've uh, got all my corners kind of where I want, um, I've got the remaining sanding that I need to do. This uh, closet built-in that I built earlier, um, I definitely, definitely want to prime this raw wood before I spray anyways, because you have to prime all raw wood uh, before the final paint, it just uh, uh, cures the wood, soaks in, and gives it a nice uh, um, solid finish. So, um, but before I prime it, I want to use my uh, orbital sander um, 
to sand in on the walls. I'm also going to use this orbital sander to go along these flats and go on my baseboard to get the uh, nail holes that I've patched off earlier. So orbital sander works by two ways. It spins and it wiggles. So it, um, it has a better advantage than just a flat palm sander because the aggressive aggressiveness of it with the rotating as well as the sand, as, as well as the vibrating just allows it to sand a lot quicker. So um, if you if you get a hold of one of these and you have flat areas that you need to sand, this is definitely a way to uh, get them done a lot quicker. So um, I'm just going to uh, start up. I'm going to run them up and down on the casings and visually keep my eye on uh, where I've gone to see that I can see the patch being removed and then I'll carry on to the next spot. So uh, have a look. Okay, so this is ready to go except for the extra that I've got over on the sides here. So again, I'm going to grab that sanding block and just break those edges off. And then I'm going to show you the other side doing the whole thing with the sanding block so you can just see how much longer it actually takes and uh, how much harder you have to work at it. So I'm um, just going to grab my sanding block. And you can see here there's just some fill that's just on this bead. So rub it off. Um, if you don't uh, have good lighting like I do, um, obviously I'm videotaping here so I've got some set lighting down here. Um, so it's really bright, I don't need a secondary light. But if you don't have um, really good lighting, you're going to want to get a halogen light, something you can hold with your hand, um, a really good LED flashlight or something that just will make your eye catch all the imperfections so that you sand them all. So. And then a lot of it I, I use my hand to feel. So like when I when I feel over this section here, I, I, I can I can tell that I've got to sand it. Like, you know, you just feel it too. So it's really good to use, you know, your hand, rub along. Oh, feel another little spot. Okay, so I would say that this um, particular section is definitely ready for uh, for its first coat of final paint. So uh, I'm going to use my sanding block just to show you to do this whole section by hand um, and then you can choose which way you want to do it at home. Okay, so that one's looking pretty good now too. You can see that it's a lot more work to uh, do it all by hand. So, um, and obviously when I sand all these flats, which I'm gonna show you right now, uh, it's a lot faster to use the sander. So I'm just gonna show you um, probably sanding the center one, just this front edge. The rest of my sanding will be typical, so I'm not gonna really waste my time showing you all that. So let's have a look at uh, doing some of the flats with the orbital sander. Okay, so now I'm just going to work this edge 
And then just show you one more side on the flat. Um, you can see I'm not wearing a dust mask, but it is getting quite dusty. I'm not wearing one right now just because uh, I'm trying to show you this in the video. When I do go through this room to finish everything off, I will definitely wear my dust mask and be protected from the particles that are sanding off. So just something to keep in mind at home. Okay, so once you go through your whole building closet with your sanding, I'm going to begin by priming all this and then it should be ready to spray over here as well. <laughs> 